Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you to the virtual open evening for Classical Civilization. Uh, my name is David Atta. I'm one of the teachers on the course, uh, and I introduce to you uh, Katarina Powell, who's going to be one of the uh, presenters. Uh, and we also have three students we're uh, delighted to include in our session this evening, uh, Sophia, Naomi and Adam, and they'll be talking uh, later on. Uh, the way the session is going to work is we're going to give you um, uh, about a 15, 20 minute presentation uh, and Katerina is going to lead that. Uh, and then we've got time for questions and answers, uh, which you can uh, post up and I'll be uh, running the Q&A session and I will be queuing in um, the students later on so you can think about asking questions either to us as teachers or to the students. Um, so over to you, um, Katerina. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Um, welcome all to Classical Civilization um, uh, introduction. Uh, so the first slide that I want to uh, share with you has uh, the name of the Classics team. You've met David, uh, um, you've met me just now, Katerina, and the other uh, person who's also head of Classic, teacher in charge of Latin and Classical Civilization, who isn't with us tonight, is Natasha Kazanovich. So this is the Classics team, and these are the teachers who teach Classics and uh, Classical Civilization and Latin. Um, the next slide uh, um, is um, it's, it's, um, it's an outline of how our A-level uh, functions. Um, it's a linear A-level, uh, so it means that we've got exams at the end of the two years. Uh, in the first year, um, we, um, we study a module called the world of the era, where we usually read uh, um, Homer's uh, either Iliad or Odyssey. This year we started with the Iliad, but um, for example, the year before we read the Odyssey. And uh, we also cover um, component number two, uh, titled Beliefs and Ideas, which covers the politics of the late Republic, uh, where um, you study that specific uh, historical period through the um, um, three key figures, the three key players, uh, Cicero, Caesar, and Cato, as you can see in the slide. Um, in the year two, we move on to culture and the arts, where we read uh, um, uh, Greek tragedy and comedy. Namely, we read Sophocles, Oedipus, the king, uh, Euripides, Spotkheim, Aristophanes, frogs. There is also a visual um, component in this, um, uh, in this module. So we uh, look at some uh, uh, works of art, uh, pots and fragments, uh, and try to understand what they can tell us about the, these civilizations together with the text. And then there is uh, um, another um, um, component, uh, which is called the world of the era, where we read Virgil's Aeneid. So you can see that in both years, there is a Greek side and a Roman side. Um, um, as I was saying before, it's linear, so we've got exams after two years, uh, and uh, this is a breakdown of the papers that you will be sitting together with uh, um, uh, the marks and uh, the, the time allocated for each paper. So the, the first component, which is the world of the euro, as I said, Homer plus Virgil is a two hours and 20 minutes paper, 100 marks. The Greek the uh, theater paper together with the visual art is an hour and 45 minutes of paper um, um, and uh, is 75 marks. And finally, component number three, beliefs and ideas, is an hour and 45 minute paper. It's again 75 marks and covers the politics of the late Republic. Um, <clears throat> Uh, is this, this is just a slide on the world of the hero um, with, uh, with, with an image. This is a, a, <clears throat> um, a module that uh, David is currently teaching, so perhaps uh, um, either later or whenever he can, he can tell you a little bit about it uh, if he wants to. Uh, this is a slide that covers Greek theatre. Um, 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 again, we've got the three plays that we read, the Sophocles, Oedipus, the King, which we are reading at the moment. Uh, Next time we're going to move on to Bakai by Euripides and um, uh, Frogs by Aristophanes, like a comedy we're probably going to be reading in, in, in the summer term. Um, here are two slides, uh, not just for now, but because I know that this um, you, you will be able to access so the presentation as well as the slide. Perhaps here is some uh, uh, some homework for you if you want to find out what this uh, uh, these three terms uh, mean and you want to play around. Maybe you know it already, or maybe you don't. It's just a, a 
home, as I said, homework for you after uh, this uh, this introduction finishes. And here is another slide about Oedipus the King, just to uh, remind uh, our students that the texts that we read uh, that we read in in this uh, in this A level have had an enormous influence uh, on the way in which we think uh, and on our. Uh, literature and our literary canon as a whole. So um, it, it's really an A-level that um, is, uh, is, 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 con is in constant dialogue with the reality where we live in. Um, here is a very nice image of the three key players that uh, are studied uh, in, the, in the module of the politics. Of the late Republic. And I think um, and I think uh, and I think this is this is pretty much. Oh, sorry, uh, there was a problem with the with the slides. Excuse me. Um, another thing that we do in classical civilization is we organize educational trips. So these are a couple of images of the educational trips that have been, um, um, happened last year. They went to Rome, um, and uh, of course, we're able to see some of the places that they studied and uh, analyzed and read in in the module. Um, and further their understanding of, uh, of the subject matter. We organize uh, um, um, guest lectures, so we've got, uh, we, we try to take advantage of the fact that we've got the Faculty of Classics really close to us and many uh, lecturers, readers and professors um, have, um, have done us the kindness to come and talk to the students about the uh, um, um, about their um, expertise, but uh, the beautiful thing about these guest lectures is that this um, the lecturers tailor um, the content of their lecture to the A level, so it's it, they pitch it to the right level, so the students can benefit. They can hear from other voices and. Uh, um, enrich basically their understanding of the A-level and hopefully um, uh, put that uh, uh, into practice when they sit their exam. So here is just a list of some of the people that over the years have come and talked to us about uh, uh, ancient civilizations. Uh, and this is just also a picture of a guest lecture in particular here. I think it was Professor Paul Cutledge delivering a lecture on, on the Odyssey and this were the students. The other nice thing about this guest lectures is that um, of course, we organize it for our students of classical civilization and Latins, but sometimes they attract the interest of other students coming from other departments. And, and so it, it becomes a very nice social um, um, uh, event where people just can make friends and uh, be together, uh, sharing the passion for, for the ancient world. Uh, we attend events. This is a picture um, from... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I, th I think it was from, yes, it's November 2019, there was uh, um, a performance, uh, a musical performance of Virgil's Enid, uh, there was touring around England, uh, further details are here in the, in the slide, and we can see that we've got uh, three of our students together with the performers, and again, of course, this has been like a very uh, of course, like a very beautiful event, but very useful for the students because they could get a feel of uh, of, uh, of how this poetry might have might have sounded and might have been enjoyed back then. Um, we are uh, we liars, and we are in uh, we were created uh, contact with the classical association and with uh, and who here in Cambridge who organize all sorts of events and lecture. This is an evening lecture. We've got again our students together with the speaker who deliver the, this lecture, which is Yanis Galanakis. And next, you can see um, uh, <clears throat> uh, you can see of course our students, uh, Professor Mary Beard, uh, um, as well as. Rosano Mitovoglio. So um, this is just like uh, another example of, uh, of the events, uh, how we try to enrich basically uh, the student experience of the ancient world. Of course, the A-level is a primary um, uh, undertaking, but we try to try to make the experience as rich and as diverse as possible by uh, um, furthering the educational offer. Uh, we learn ancient Greek, so although we cannot offer um, a level in Greek, we do run uh, um, ancient Greek uh, lunchtime club uh, where we informally gather and people who have either studied Greek beforehand or don't have uh, uh, any knowledge of Greek can can learn either the basics or continue just to study. So as I said, it's an informal lunchtime club. It's also like a means for students to, so to socialize. And we um, and we informally 
help the students with whatever needs that they might have uh, and uh, and try to support basically the passion for uh, ancient civilizations and languages. Um, we're very proud of our students uh, um, for, of course, the, the people who they are, but also for the results that they achieve. This is our A star to be, uh, this is this uh, grades, and this is the slide picture of the performance. So you can see this significantly above the national average. Um, um, and uh, when it comes to students' destination, um, classical civilization is really an A-level that can prepare students for whatever um, career path or avenue they might want to think of. Of course, like a career path in the humanities is perhaps the, the most obvious uh, connection, but then, and then here you can see the students gone and, studying, and studying classical civilization, classical literature and civilization studies, politics, English literature with creative writing, American studies, history, fashion, communication and promotion. So there is a very, very broad range of, uh, um, of, of, of um, <clears throat> degrees that our students go and, and, and choose. Um, and um, I think this is it from me now. I'll just pass it on to David, who can perhaps introduce the year 13 students, uh, who can tell you about their experience of classical civilization and hills. Many thanks for that. Um, so um, let's cue in um, Sophia and Naomi and Adam, if you want to sort of, um, there we go, um, uh, show yourselves and have a wave and a smile. That's, that's brilliant. Um, so um, do keep um, questions coming with, I've got one from Holly that I've got my eye on, which I'll sort of come to in, in due course. Um, so uh, really just sort of um, to go around and just sort of get the students just to say what their experience of, of the course has been um, so far. Um, Naomi, can you start off, um, you know, have you found um, doing a level classical civilization? I've absolutely loved it. It's definitely one of my favourite subjects. Um, I do two humanities and maths. So even though I do history as well, classics still offers something slightly different because I think there's definitely an Englishy and politics aspect to it. I think I'm the only one of the three students who also did classics at GCSE. That's um, really useful because Holly asked what the difference is. And so yeah. Could you just say something about that? And then we'll bring... um, there are some differences, mm. uh, but I would say that doing it at GCSE has been helpful for me. And I have been able to draw on some of that knowledge. But I think overall, there's an extension of what you do at GCSE. So you have to delve further into the text, mm -hmm. find more details. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a much wider cultural aspect that you yeah. don't necessarily look at at GCSE. And while it has been helpful to me, it's absolutely not a requirement that you do classical civilization or Latin or ancient history or anything like that. And I think most people don't have a background in that and all of us still really enjoy it and are still very capable of getting the top grades. Well done. Thank you for uh, saying that. And that's abs absolutely right. I mean, it's good if you've done GCSE uh, uh, before classical civilization, because that, you know, obviously um, sparks your interest off and gives you that real bedrock of understanding. But we do start with a, a kind of an assumption that you haven't studied this before. You've probably got your own private interest, for whatever reason, mythology or, um, you know, ancient history, ancient Rome, whatever it is. But um, we don't assume that you, you know, have done anything before. So that, that's fantastic. Sophia, um, I'm going to bring you in and then Adam. Um, Sophia, just what's your experience of the course been like so far? Um, I love it as well. It's honestly so interesting. And how uh, Katerina and Natasha do it, honestly, I am happy to go to lesson. Yeah. And I don't find it as a burden. So it's honestly so good. And um, unlike Naomi, I did not have a GSC in either classical civilization or Latin uh, and still managed to understand basically everything that we are taught. So honestly, no background needed. It, um, I, I'm sure not held you back. No, yeah. no at all. Good, excellent. Thank you for that. Adam, over to you. What, what's your experience been like with the course? Tell me what you particularly enjoyed on the course um, so far. So I really enjoy it. And I think it's, uh, I think my favorite aspect has definitely been the more, because um, there's, you know, Historic parts like so doing, you know, the politics of the Roman Republic and doing Greek theatre have de I've definitely found really engaging because I mean I'm also I'm quite a political person. Yeah. I'm also very interested in sort of um, you know these the sort of 
culture and society of you know the ancient world and I also do um, I did GCSE Latin and I also do it at A level so doing both those two subjects um, together are really really useful like it's you know in some ways you know one can assist me in the other and they just you know blend really well I'm actually the only person in year 13 who does both but I'm pleased I do because they're both really enjoyable yeah, great. Thank you for that. Uh, again, you've got some of the te uh, technical problems we had earlier, but we uh, we certainly followed what you said there. That was um, really uh, useful. Um, and um, I'm going to just bring in a few of the questions here that might be answered by the students as, as well as um, ours. I know there's a few, so there's obviously a kind of a you know, a real genuine question, do you need to have any previous classical education in order to take the course? And again, just to reiterate, no. All we want is interest. Um, you want to learn about the subject and throw yourself into it. That, that's all we want. Um, one question is, is classical civilization more about history and culture or literature? Naomi, do you want to take that on? What would you say? What's your experience been? Um, I'd say it's quite a mix because mm. in the aspects that are literature based being like world of the hero looking at those epics as well as the plays you still have to have an understanding of the culture surrounding that mm. how um, the ancients perceived themselves how they liked to be perceived mm. and their own cultural values and moral values yeah. and then the culture aspects like politics of the late republic you still look at texts like uh, cicero's in verum and his letters to try and see if that provides evidence towards the culture and relationships between some of the key figures. So mm. I'd say there's definitely a balance between the two mm. and you have to be interested in both to really get the most out of the course. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very eloquently um, stated. And uh, I think the beauty of classical civilization, classical studies as, as a whole is, is just the immense range and diversity. You can go from um, uh, studying what is effectively ancient history, isn't it? Fall of the Roman Republic, um, Roman history, to um, studying uh, theatre, ancient drama, ancient uh, epic, yeah? um, Roman epic, and, and you're moving around connected subjects, but subject, you know, topics that um, bring great variety. Um, so um, re really good questions there. I mean, in terms of students studying classical civilization, um, uh, which is one question. Um, just say something about Sophia, um, Adam. What what is your experience of class sizes? I mean, what what are your classes like? Um, not quite. They're not big. I think we're like 18, 20 maybe. Which but is this year we're more because some moved to our class. Yeah, yeah I have quite a small class. Yeah. I think there's the, twelve of us in yeah. my class. Yeah, which, they're quite small, which help have like group discussions and share ideas yeah. and points and stuff. Yeah. Come and we have a lot of fun better balance is about 12 and 18 so it goes you know it's, it's a, a, around that but it may you know it could be uh, last year we had an upper six group that was you know 20 sort of plus um you know but you know so so th those are the kinds of, of of sizes um so um anybody got anything else they want to say about their experience what about um talking about it, extracurricular things have any of you been on any of these sort of lectures or other extension activities i know that's been blown away by obviously lockdown but uh, yeah. did you get to do anything before that I just um i think me and adam went to the um, odyssey um talk yeah, yeah and that was incredibly that. interesting and helpful for yeah. uh, the scholars notes and stuff it was yeah i mean paul, paul cartledge is, is is an eminent world you know, scholar of world reputation um, and, and therefore, we're incredibly lucky to have the people. I was at that lecture as well, and, and I've heard him lecture over many years. It was brilliant. It was wonderful, wasn't it? I learned, I learned things. Yeah. We were about to go on a Greek trip, which was overtaken by events in the path we, we've been to, you know, Rome and, 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 and so on. So it's a very active department in terms of, of extra curricular activities. I don't think there's any department in the, in the college which is, which is more um, uh, active. So um, I think we, we've um, covered the kinds of questions that I can um, uh, see there. I'll tell you what would be useful, just to hear from the students what you plan to go on to do with your classical civilization. Do you want to say something about that? Again, Naomi, back to you and sort of st start with you. What, 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 what are you using it for? Um, before I do that, I just saw there's one question, how does classical yeah. civilization compare in difficulty to history? Yeah. And again, I think, am I the only one who does history as well? 
Yep. Okay, yes. so I'll take that one. Um, I think they sound on the surface like they would be quite similar subjects, but they're actually very different, which makes it quite difficult to compare difficulty because there's a lot of different aspects that are required in both of them. I wouldn't say one is necessarily more difficult than the other, but I would say that there's a lot less interpretation in history. It's more sticking to the facts and sticking to what um, historians have already looked at for events. The only thing where it's more your interpretation that you look at is your coursework. But in classics, you don't have coursework, so you don't really worry about that. So I'd say in classics, you're looking more at your own views and interpretations of texts and events and things whereas in history you have more of a technical looking at scholars aspect mm. yeah that's brilliant and that's fascinating to, to to hear that and again that emphasis upon um the evidence uh, and looking at the, closely at the documents i mean that's really a great training and, and Naomi, you were just talking earlier about your plans for university and how that might fit in with that uh yeah i'm I have applied to do law next year at university and I think classics is one of the best subjects yeah. for that especially considering that in one of our modules we actually study a lawyer of ancient Rome being Cicero. Not just a lawyer but probably Not the most famous lawyer, lawyer in history. Yeah. Famous lawyers. You're absolutely right, it could be a better training for any uh, yeah. lawyer than study the life career and writings of, of, of Cicero. And his, um, Classics is a really good subject for yeah. law, even if you don't do any other humanities, right. yeah. because it has English, it has history, it has yeah. politics, it has philosophy, mm -hmm. it's basically all humanities in one. Mm -hmm. It is. That's very, very well said. It's interesting you say about philosophy. So we, we're doing the um, uh, Iliad, Roman epic, um, clearly, um, you know, foundational literary texts for kind of European and sort of world sort of literary culture. But within that, there are all sorts of, of embedded philosophical ideas and concepts. Um, you know, which which we can tease out. So that that's that's brilliant. Um, Sophia, moving on to on to you. Um, uh, Tell me, tell, tell, tell the rest of the group what you were telling me earlier about, um, about the future. Yeah, I, I take a weird mix of subjects. I take geology and French as well as classical civilization. In fact, I want to go and do bioarchaeology at uni, which is why classical civilization is so helpful, because other than also helping me with the history and with the analytical part of essays, it also helps me to have a different view and interpret stuff. Therefore, it will help me in the future analysing um, finds and stuff like that, uh, which helps me with geology and French. And um, But I w it is helpful independently as well. So even if I didn't have my other two subjects, it would still help me do archaeology or bioarchaeology um, well because of its, all, its variation of skills that you learn from it. Yeah, fascinating. And, and geology is a great subject to take with classical civilization. It's literally the bedrock of history and culture, isn't it? Yeah. Geology. Yeah, exactly. It's so important. So it's such a great combination. So it's not weird at all. I mean, actually, it, it makes absolutely perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, I am the only person in my year doing that combination, but yes. <laughs> you, you, you've chosen a great combination. I know, I know that uh, for, 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 for sure. So uh, well done. Um, uh, thank you for that. Adam, over to you. What, what, what plan for you sort of onward from uh, Class Civ? So I've applied for, uh, <coughs> for archaeology at Oxford University. Okay. And I think that, you know, the fundamental really help me when I go on to study you know something like archaeology especially in like the more classical aspects of it because you know there's a lot of um, critical thinking and essay writing that goes into it and there's of course a lot of you know historical importance and I think I've learned a lot about that from having done classical civilization A level. Thank you. Um, that, that's good. We, we, we heard that. There's, there's clearly a kind of you go loud and then quiet, which is obviously not outside your control. But thank you for, uh, for that. Um, keep the questions coming. Um, I think what we'll do now is just return to the remaining slides, if there are any. Are we able to bring those up? We seem to have lost the slide. Right. Okay. Back. Back. To, yeah. So, Katarina, back to you. So, I think we're near the end of the of the of the presentation. Um, 
and then we just Q and A, which we 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 done. So we we we're, we're really at the end. So so really, um, I, I'm I'm sort of looking here at questions, and, and there are no sort of um, uh, new um, uh, questions um, that are uh, coming up. I think we've really sort of covered everything that we would want to say. You've got some opportunity now. There's some time left to um, ask any any sort of further questions. Um, Katarina, is there anything else you you think you might want to say? The no. sort of questions that the students have asked in, in the past. I think we've we've got um, you know a good range of questions. I think a student asked what what kinds of um, subjects do you need to have taken before to do classical civilization? Well, you know any group of, of, of subjects that you know that you know standard entry qualifications. Nothing you know um, different. Um, so anything that you would need to study sociology, history, um, history of art, politics, and so on, religious studies, same for classical civilization. Yeah. Um, um, so um, so yeah. there's a question about uh, whether mythology comes into the course. So yeah, do you want to take that on? Yeah, um, mythology is all over the course uh, because whether it is in the Odyssey or the Enneid or Oedipus, it, the gods, the creatures, they all come into play because it was a fundamental belief of that culture. Even so, when we're looking at actual historical events in politics of the late Republic, the mythology that the Romans believed also comes in. Exactly, because yeah. they just structured their society. So we will see a lot, of, we see a lot of mythology. It wasn't mythology for them, was it? It was their reality. No, it was yeah. history and yeah, yeah. 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 It was their full belief. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, studying things like um, the Iliad um, and um, the, the Greek uh, plays, you know, as you say, particularly the person and Bacco, but Iliad preeminently, it, it, it's the fountain source, isn't it, of mythology? You know, if you are interested in mythology, you know, that's where you'll go to learn about those sorts of things. So, um, so yes, you, you, you will develop at the end of it a, a really comprehensive sense of, of, of Greek and, and, and Roman myths. So good. Are there any further sort of questions that um, we I think there are a few that have been asked that have been maybe like missed in the thing. So yeah, I'm just the go as, you, as you see them. So um, um, there was one a while ago, I think, that said how regularly are essays assigned? Mm, yeah. um, it might be different for Sophia and Adam, but we have we do have essays, but they're not really that long in terms of essays. So a lot of the ones we're set are 10 markers, which yeah. are quite short and quick. And when you get to year 13, you can get one done in 15 minutes. Yeah, we, we get them the same. Uh, we the get, I think essay, we get a 10 marker a week. Yeah, yeah. but they oh, yeah. honestly do not take that long. And it's just really good practice to keep doing them. Yeah, and then the longer essays, the 20 mark ones are the ones we're next set most commonly. We don't get those very often because they often take um, across like a whole topic and a, or a big theme that covers like the whole book or the whole period that you're looking at, yeah. which means you usually get it after you've finished a topic. And again, you get them regularly, but not as regularly as the shorter ones. Yeah, and then there's the 30 markers, which are even more rarer, simply yeah. because they cover the whole topic as well yeah. as having sources externally that we have to add to them. And then comparing across yeah. Um, yeah. topics as well. Scholarship, yeah. scholarship involved there. So, yeah, really good, really good answers there. Um, so, I mean, just picking up a few other sort of questions I'm seeing here. Um, uh, and uh, Morgan asked, do we look at uh, plays other than the set ones as well? We don't have time to do that. These are really, you know, three plays <laughs> I, a lot. I, I teach um, English literature as well, uh, and we, t we do two plays, and that, that's, you know, the fair amount. So three, three is a lot. I mean, clearly, if there are other um, productions or, you know, forms, we, we, you know, would recommend them, um, but we, we don't have time to, 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 to look at, um, um, you know, uh, much uh, else. I mean, Louisa um, asking, is there anything else you can do to prepare for, for starting the subject? Um, there will be um, some formal sort of summer work to be to be set. I think really the um, probably the best thing is, is, is um, you know, reading around the subjects and picking up things that you, um, you know, just sort of fancy the look of that you find interesting. 
for example, Stephen Fry's um, mythos is, is very popular. People talking about mythology. You might want to, you know, dip in and read a little bit of, you know, um, you know, Homer and see how you get on with it, and that will give you give you a flavour. Um, lots of good sort of popular histories, you know, dealing with things like Roman Roman history or, or the ancient uh, Greeks. Um, so I think I, I would just say, you know, pursue your own interests, and and um, you know, it's such a wide subject that it doesn't really matter to look at how you approach it. You will find routes in that that will take you um, uh, in interesting ways. Now, um, Kennedy's asked, um, and I, I'm not sure if that I'm, I'm assuming that's a first name. Um, apologies if not. Um, would this subject pair well with English literature? Well, you, I'm, I'm an English literature teacher, uh, and um, yes, absolutely. Um, certainly, as um, a um, literature teacher. Um, I'd be saying obviously classics is, is really important. I teach Hamlet, for example, we were talking about Oedipus, um, Tyrannus early and, and the, the links between sort of ancient and Shakespearean tragedy. Uh, but also um, sort of English students will bring, um, you know, particular awarenesses of, of things like, sort of, you know, narrative characterization. Um, and I think particularly in, in studying drama, sort of dram, you know, um, you know, dramatology, the, the, the way in which plays work as plays, I think is something that you will be able to sort of bring across. So, um, uh, you know, absolutely. And probably Naomi, you probably say that, you know, I'd, I'd like to sort of take a sort of sidestep and we're sort of doing classics and, you know, look at a little bit of sort of English literature that kind of ties in with yeah. it. Um, um, so, um, so yes, it's, it's um, as good a, a, a pairing or as a, a combination as, as could be um, found. Ben is asking, will anything uh, be changing about how classics is taught uh, in Hills Road? Um, my uh, belief is not. Um, we said that we um, have just changed from Odyssey to Iliad and um, um, my intention is not to change back. Um, so, Catherine, would you agree with that, that it's kind of, you know, we, we continue with what we've got? Yes. We've got great materials and we, we don't want to, um, you know, uh, change them. So, um, Isabel asked, do universities prefer history of classical civilization? Well, um, there's no preference. It depends on what, what you know. Um, what you want to do. I mean, um, clearly, you know, if you've studied classical civilization, you've studied ancient history. Um, therefore, you, you know, you have done history, you're partly a historian. Um, so there's, there's no, there's no hierarchy. There's no sort of, you know, esteem placed more on one subject than another. Um, I think the main thing is you do well at, at your A levels and that, that's the most important thing. Um, so. Um, I saw one about whether it goes well with physics and double maths. Okay. Um, and I would say yes, because it is yeah. a complete contrast to it. And plus it gives you a more logical thinking and it just relax on a, it, it just helps to balance the two different subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do maths as well. Not double maths because that's really different. But um I think classics is like a great pair with maths, which sounds like contradictory, but honestly they work quite well together because you're almost using different parts of your brain and it allows you to just switch off one part and focus on something completely different, which is quite nice. And that change of pace keeps you awake and focused and just enjoy things more. So I think when you're doing the same thing again and again, it can get really tiring really quickly. But because I have that contrast, I just don't have that issue. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we, you know, greatly, greatly welcome students who come, you know, with different discipline backgrounds, um, um, you know, physics, maths, chemistry, well, you know, bring different skills, different ways of thinking, different analytical um, um, qualities. And as I say, Sophia's, you know, subject of geology is, is, a, is a wonderful um, sort of partnering of, of classical civilization. Callum's asking about coverage of philosophy. And um, yes, I mean, it, it's something that we do, um, um, you know, tackle because, um, I mean, we, we quote philosophers. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And in, in the, the Greek plays, there are sort of philosophical ideas and values being um, um, sort of represented and ex explored. And there are questions about, in, in the Iliad, all sorts of, of, of interesting questions around sort of fate and predeterminism, um, you know, uh, values and, and, and the um, philosophical value system, for example, of the, of the Romans is, is, is also... Um, you know, part of it, you know, Stoics, Epicureans, and, and so forth, the Sophists, you know, the, these kinds of movements that shape the culture of the time is something that, yes, is part of the, of the wider um, context. So if you did do a, um, a classical civilization A-level, 
um, at the end of it, you would have, you know, certainly encountered some of the kind of, you know, major philosophical ideas um, of the ancient world. And the answered your question about how does the subject link to, to philosophy again, you know, extremely, extremely well and, and clearly, you know, classical philosophy is a major, you know, well, it's the foundation of, of, of you know, all philosophy, isn't it, in terms of, um, you know, sort of particularly ancient Greek philosophy. So, so yes, I mean, the, having that sort of cultural sort of background is good. I know this because I've got a friend who's a philosopher who, who teaches philosophy at a university. Um, and, you know, he's talked to me about some um, sort of ideas that are classics. And I've sort of said to him, well, hang on, you know, you're, you're approaching as a philosopher, but there is a kind of a cultural context which might explain this um, a, a little bit more sort of subtly than you're perhaps suggesting. So class, classical civilization, classical studies do bring important things to the study of, of, of philosophy. Um, good, I think I am scrolling down um, questions and I think I'm not seeing anything new um, Ed's asked, would it be helpful to read anything in advance of the A-level? I've been kind of bringing the students there. What have you read yeah. that they uh, would like to read? I mean, I've read the Iliad, Odyssey and the Aeneid, um, uh, Bacchus and the Oedipus at Tyrannus, all before actually starting the course. Yeah. Um, and I did find it helpful because that way, when I was taught about it, I was already familiar with the text. Mm -hmm. Even but, if you haven't read those texts themselves, I think yeah. it's very helpful to maybe read like a summary or a fictional <laughs> verse, like a modern interpretation of it yeah. because just knowing the kind of events that happen even if it's not the exact Homeric text it's still really helpful. Yeah, um, yeah. there's a great wealth isn't there of, of um, huge <laughs> in topics in, in our culture. You go into a bookshop, you go into a bookshop, you'll find, you know, people like Tom Holland writing great, wonderful, wonderfully readable uh, accounts of, of, of Roman history, um, all sorts of, of, of um, versions of, of, of classical um, myths and legends and narratives. I mean, one of my favourites that I read was Madeline Miller's The Song of Achilles. And yeah. considering you'll be doing the Iliad, I would definitely re recommend it don't mm. take everything in it for fact because she does go a bit further mm. with one interpretation um that some people disagree with but it does give you a really good idea of yeah. the figure achilles who is the central figure of the iliad and the kind of society he lived in the kind of society he was raised in and what his fate meant to him so I, I mean, you're, you're right. It's all part of the kind of, you know, the, the, the conversation, the discourse, the arguments about what, what these classical texts mean for our own age. And, and um, you know, that that's why, um, you know, they're, they're so good. And Natalie Haynes is another great popularizer, isn't she, of, of, of classical studies, a whole series of, you know, she's a stand up comedian and a classicist, and she writes very um, readable, you know, entertaining, but very, um, you know, well-researched, uh, informative uh, book. So I think that, you know, just going and read, you know, things for interest and enjoyment is is, is probably the, you know, the, you know, the best um, uh, way into it. One of the <coughs> university destinations, and again, um, probably typically of any, um, uh, you know, Hills Road student going on to university, there'll be some students um, um, applying and, and achieving offers from uh, Oxford, Cambridge. But then probably if you went through most of the major, you know, higher education institutions, we've pro probably sent, you know, students from classical civilization into most British universities, either to study classics or classics related courses um, or other subjects where, you know, classics is, is, is one of their three or four subjects. Um, uh, someone sorry. just asked, what about Percy Jackson? <laughs> exactly. Um, um, there are at least four people in my class who took classics because of a love of Percy Jackson. And yeah. considering my class is 12, that's a third of us. Um, and it's, yeah, I think, I wouldn't say you need to have read it or you should read it. I don't think there is anyone in our class that has not read it. But it's fun and it's a great way to get into classics. So again, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it though as a like a Bible kind of thing, as in the Bible, but like as in read it. the myths in there, they're retold, so I yeah. wouldn't trust them completely. But they do, they're they, mostly true, but not 
stimulate an interest. <laughs> yeah. Anything that anything that takes you into the subject is 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 great, isn't it? And if it's if it's fun, that's why Natalie Haynes is good because you know she can be funny and entertaining, but also the substance there. She's a you know a classicist, a real you know proper classicist as well. It's been you know funny funny writer. Um, so um, so good, yeah. Um, and, and obviously, when we sort of come to close to the time, we we can sort of you know make some suggestions available to you know anybody who you know want, wants anything sort of particular to to to, to read um i mean so um, in terms of roman history if you're you know keen on history i think some of tom holland's um you know books um about the end of the roman republic the early roman empire incredibly readable he's a very um you know sort of good classicist as well to, to to read i mean they read like political thrillers um they're, they're um, very uh, engaging so good uh, Blood in the Forum is also a very um, helpful book for the Roman side of the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, someone asked what subjects would go well with classical civilization. And all honestly, I think all of them, apart from maybe P, that doesn't really mix yeah. with it. But I think the rest of them really completely all do. We're more than happy to. P is great. We will. Do, anybody <laughs> do P, please do classic classics as uh, as yeah. well. Spartan training, PE. There you go. <laughs> let, 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 let's not forget that um, you know the the, um, the gymnasium and the rest of it were kind of you know sort of uh, ancient Greek invention. Yeah. So um, um, so yeah, um, we, um, any, any kind of combination is 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 yeah. is, is, is suitable if, if 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 it fits for you. Um, so good. Any catch anything else you want to sort of say to round up? Because I think um, unless there are any any um, uh, so last questions. I'm going to prove my last point because I believe it or not, I am actually going to go to to the gym uh, now um, uh, before I go back to show that kind of uh, you know uh, in, you know um, sort of uh, you know healthy body, sort of healthy mind uh, ethos of the ancient Romans. So um, thank you everybody uh, for taking part. Um, we um, thought were great questions. As I say, we, we've still got a few moments if you want to sort of. Um, Put forward any last um, questions so we can deal with them but otherwise um, I think um, we've um, said I think what what we we can say about it we're obviously very much sort of hoping that you will uh, want to choose this subject I think what you've um, got from um, you know both teachers and, and certainly from the students is that you know this is a subject that um, engages people uh, you know to, you know not just an intellectual level but a passionate level you know people really kind of uh, get swept away uh, by it uh, and therefore, you know, that's that's what we hope you will, um, you know, participate in uh, next year. So, um, you know, thank you for taking part uh, in uh, this uh, virtual open evening for classical civilization. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And I think we can now.